Hi, I am Isabella Nika. Unfortunately, the coronavirus has prevented me and my colleague Miriam Landskammer from being in class today. But we are available online and happy to answer your questions afterwards. In the Kiki project, we want to explore new ways of analyzing depictions of materials, such as wood or stone, in medieval paintings using methods from digital humanities and computer vision. The project is a collaboration between two divisions of the University of Salzburg, the Institute for Medieval and Early Modern Material Culture and the Department of Artificial Intelligence and Human Interfaces. The jointly developed approaches will focus on direct imitations of material surfaces. We use a distant viewing approach that is comparing images of, say, marble in a larger body of images. This is not only relevant for big data, but also in the case of one richly illuminated manuscript. For example, the Concordancia Caritatis manuscript from Lienfeld consists of over 500 pages. And on almost 250 of these, there are five narrative pictures, as here on folio 100 or so. The layout of these pages is the same everywhere, so that I can call them image fields A to E. Now, even for this relatively small number of pictures, altogether it's 1,188 small images, it is useful to be able to visualize the material used in each picture field. We can do this because of the existing image annotation data in the Real Online Image Database. So here you can see in two rows the images from page 2 to 248 with the five image fields A to E and the colored bars visualizing how often marble is represented in each picture field. With this visualization, we were able to identify a cluster of marble depictions. Thus, it became clear that the marble block in which the phoenix is depicted, here, and which is not used for the bird in any other pictorial tradition, relates it to this marble cluster and with it to themes of the deposition and resurrection of Christ. In the same manuscript, the material dry earth clots or craggy rock, which have the same texture, are used much more often and appear on every page. And there are very few picture fields without this material, just so you have a comparison. Some material properties and surface qualities are visually perceivable, and so they can be imitated in painting. But of course, that doesn't mean that this is always the case. Here on the left, the shine of the metal armor is explicitly shown in a quite realistic manner, while the cross that Jesus is carrying has no wood grain. We infer the material from the color, which is of course another surface property, together with our knowledge of the object. On the other hand, textures pointing to a certain material are found on objects where you wouldn't expect that material, as in the case of this saw on the right, whose blade is surprisingly enough represented with a wood grain. Sorry for the quiet, morbid example. The ability to automatically detect textures regardless of the object type and to analyze where surface properties are not shown can in the future reveal trends, patterns and outliers in the representation of materials. The last examples have already led to the topic of wood grain, to which our first investigation in collaboration with computer vision is dedicated. Wood is a natural material that can take on very different visual appearances in the physical world and even more so in painting. Differences in the represented textures often play a role in the narrative strategies of medieval paintings, especially when it comes to the wood of the cross. In the crucifixion by Konrad Leib, the horizontal beam of Christ's cross has a distinctive pattern, and this pattern not only echoes the blood running down from the wounds on Christ's hands, but it also reinforces the link to the good thief who is crucified to Christ's right. His cross beam has the same grain. Together they form a contrast to the cross of the impenitent thief. In order to determine whether the texture of Christ's crossbeam is a special case and whether it is found more frequently on other wooden objects in medieval imagery, it is necessary to compare many other depicted wooden surfaces. 
in contrast to the example of the wooden saw blade, which is strange because of the material itself. Thank you, and now I hand over to Michael. Okay, I will continue with the computer vision part. And yeah, sorry. And we try to find something like these textures in, in images like this. And the first task we needed to do is a manual segmentation and annotation to build up our uh, data set for, for our ground truth data set. And the, we were looking for a software which meets our requirements, which is uh, very, that we can easily segment difficult objects and to label them, of course, but additionally, we want to put a lot of attributes to them, uh, like um, the, the structure of the grain, the, the painting uh, styles and, and colors and so on. And also, you can see Jesus hanging on the cross also splits the, the cross into several parts and we want to keep track of uh, those parts which belong together. And of course, data, uh, and user management is of interest. And finally, we decided to use uh, CVET, which is an open source tool. And here we see an example of the manual annotation uh, task. And then it's quite easy with an algorithm to extract uh, patches which contain the, the wood cross and also some additional um, uh, random fabrics which are made of non-wood. And then we started our first investigation and we asked, can we use images of real wood and use them to retrieve a painted wood to enhance our uh, amount of data? And, and so the task is finding the wood. And the question is how we can do this, how we can compare this and uh, decide it's wood or not. So somehow we need a feature descriptor uh, feature extraction method which encodes the information of the structure somehow in a vector form because then we can easily compare them like with a, dis uh, with a usual distance measure like the Euclidean distance. And this feature extraction method, method we can use classical handcrafted methods or also in the next step some artificial intelligence to generate the, the vector presentation. And the first experiment we conducted, we took every picture of real wood and measured the distance to every patch we retrieved from our paintings. And according to the computed distance, we ordered them uh, uh, to this first place with the lowest distance to the query image, second place with the second lowest uh, distance to the query image, and so forth. And then we can take the first n positions and look in it how many wood patches we got. Or we look in the first five and count again how many wood patches we got. And so we average this over all our query images and then we can somehow plot the results. And each color represents a different um, method. Uh, Featured this uh, extraction method, which were all classical ones in this case, and we can see that it, there were at least three of these uh, descriptors which are able to a little bit m better than guessing, so to find these patches. So the, we are here a little bit above 50 percent of the first end positions are really painted wood. So this is not really exciting. And therefore, we make a sanity check where we use, instead of pictures of real wood, some subset of the painted wood. And there, we get better results. So we find more wood in the first end picture, retrieve pictures, of course, with a lot of, with a lot of um, it's increasing and it's decreasing, of course, also because of the data size. So in conclusion, we can say there is somehow difficult to use out of the box these uh, natural images to, uh, to, to retrieve uh, painted images, but there are promising results, and so we go further. And it would help to increase our data amount and also to help 
the, the annotation task so that we have some computer support. Because we need more data if we go into our future work where we want to train artificial intelligence nets, so at, uh, CNN, and make a feature extraction from these uh, filters where we learn all these filter coefficients. Then we have, again, this vector representation, and then we train a classifier which can decide it's, uh, whether it's uh, wood or non-wood. And this will be future work, and unfortunately, the end of the presentation. Thank you for your attention.